Good morning. Good time of the day. I continue my video monologue, video blog. Today from Pine Valley, Arizona. I'm getting closer to Sedona. Today I will finally get to Sedona and speak from there. As you can see, I escaped from the heat of the desert and now I'm in the mountains um, near Sedona and the energies are way greater here, way wonderful, way more wonderful. It's pretty chilly in the morning. The forecast says it will be pretty warm during the day. So if you come for our workshop in February, bring warm clothes. Yesterday in my blog, I pronounced for the first time a few ideas about the first contact. Now I will summarize them and move further. The problem is ra rather obvious. There is an ongoing fight and competition in the galaxy. And as a reflection, there is a, an ongoing fight and competition on Earth. The galaxy is separated into fighting factions and alliances and so does Earth. If aliens come here by invitations from our governments, it is very likely that competing governments will align with competing aliens. Say one country will invite Orions, another country will invite Pleiadians, third country will invite Reptilians, fourth country, will, 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 will invite Draconians. And we'll have the competition and fight here. And I'm afraid this might not be very pretty if that happens. As I understand, the aliens have the rule that at early stages only relatives can contact us. But since we are the descendants of over 20 races of aliens, still there is a lot of aliens that can contact us and can come down and come into contact. And some of them are competing with each other. Some of them are not around anymore. So it is a little fewer races, but still Orions, aliens and Pleiadians are not good friends yet. We still uh, inherit the traces of Orion Wars. Nordics are not very friendly to humanity, but still have powerful technologies. So if some, if some country decides to associate with Nordics, align with Nordics, it might not look very pretty. That is what happened, I believe, in 40s and 50s when uh, competing aliens were supporting competing countries. Like na na Nazis were supported by, I believe, negative Nordics, negative Syrians. And I'm not sure who was supporting the other countries, but say Japan, America, UK, France, Russia, might have had some support. So we don't want to repeat that. As I understand now, the solar system is under control of a coherent, more or less coherent alliance of friendly aliens, which is great. So on alien side, they are more or less united. Galactic Federation of Light, Ashtar Command, Gorkvitnir, Blue Sphere Alliance, 
and I suspect many others which are not very well named. We hear about huge motherships from all over the place, including Andromedans. On Earth we have even worse problem. There is separation horizontal and vertical, meaning horizontally the, the countries are separated from each other by language, borders, religions, cultures. And vertically, within the country, there is a lot of separation between strata, layers, classes, castes, castes. Castes. Mm -hmm. income education so we have two <coughs> scenarios the first one each country invites a competing alien alliance and the competition from the galaxy is transferred transferred to the earth transplanted to the earth and <coughs> will have a, the Earth split and competing. The second scenario is United Aliens meet with United Governments like United Nations or some other Council of Governments. United Nations is unlikely because by design it is very dysfunctional. And I like the idea of governments representing the humanity not very much either. Look at your government and see whether it, it represents the interests of the, of, the, of the country. As well, I, you know, similarly, I don't think the, the Council of Earth governments would uh, be adequate in representing the Earth. Formally, it would be acceptable. Because the governments are the governments, they are sometimes elected, sometimes they are legally installed, or they install themselves and then make it legal. And the council of competing governments would be pretty much dysfunctional, and might be dominated by what is now called cabal, financial and um, military alliance of not so of negative forces on earth so for this reason i understand the hesitant why, why the aliens are hesitant the hesitation of the aliens to to initiate the, the first contact we are not ready they might be ready but the earth is not ready there is no representative political body uh, or public body to represent the earth <clears throat> there are a few nice individuals but they are not representatives yet they are not elected they are not appointed so we need some sort of a system which would elect and appoint representatives which would represent the planet the politicians are okay, I guess, they are legally suitable, but are not very suitable in terms of practical representation. They don't, their interests are far from the interest of the planet. I guess the fathers from the interest of the planet. <clears throat> Religious leaders have the same problem. I mean, I, I believe there is many spiritual people among religious um, leaders, but when they come together, the, there would be a, a lot of disagreement, I'm afraid, possibly, I'm not sure. I guess they would be better than politicians, might be. 
Same I would say about political parties. Leaders of political parties are not too cooperative to each other. And I'm not, I'm not sure what other, if there are any other good political or, social or public organizations which would represent the planet. There is a tiny layers of tiny layer of ufologists. They come together, so that culture I think is uh, is interesting. Um, some of them want first contact. Some of them are more about the conspiracy theories and about negative aliens. But I think this is uh, maybe the basis for the formation of this public organization which would uh, be developing the, the medium where the representatives can be elected. At least these are, pe these are people who think beyond the planet, think beyond the country, beyond the planet, think um, galactically, universally. <clears throat> Light workers are least organized. There are gatherings, there are public speakers, um, there are people pop, pop, popular on YouTube. So there is a medium, there is a, a layer, a stratum of people who are thinking universally, galactically, and who are nice and genuinely care about the planet. So traditionally, we are light workers. We are separated from the public, and public is unaware of us. We are separate. We have separate language, separate clothing, separate behavior, separate food, separate interests, and we are not very good about organizing and parties and uh, getting public support. So if there is an election of representatives, we would not be even considered. If aliens would pick us, then yes, they would speak to us most likely. But the Earthens are not aware of us. So there is a problem and an opportunity. So what I would like to see is that nice people genuinely interested concern about the future of the planet, about the future of humanity, would be involved in the first contact and in the contacts following the first contact. I imagine the aliens coming down and uh, making settlements in universities, hospitals, government places, military places, monasteries, even shopping malls, any places which are easily guarded by police and which have, which could provide some safety for the aliens. And the opposite, on the, or in the sky, there should be, I see the humans starting to visit the alien ships, and starting uh, the contact, ex expanding the contact up there. So for that plan to manifest, that should be, it should populate as, it should populate the minds. It should be not only in my head, it should um, become popular among people. People should be eager to embrace it and go go forward with it so let's make it popular in earth and let's make it popular with the friendly aliens in the solar system let's make it popular in the galaxy the contact what will happen after the first contact how we will peacefully expand the the contact how how would we peacefully expand the collaboration what could be the activities? What should we do? Like, the aliens could teach us medicine. 
There is a lot of things that they can teach us. What, we, what could we give them? What would be the exchange? I'm not sure they are so much interested in our culture. There was a time in Russia when the border was open in 91 plus minus a couple years. And the tourists from Western countries started coming. And I'm not sure they were that much interested in our culture. They wanted something which they could relate to and there was not much that we could offer them. It was uh, so different. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't pass through the language barrier and if, if they had good interpreters, they couldn't understand what's so good about Russian culture. It was a culture of underground resistance. Russian culture, Russian Soviet culture was a culture of underground resistance plus, of course, a lame official culture. And neither one worked well for the Westerners, which grew up in much more liberal, free world and didn't relate much to underground and didn't relate much to lame official culture. They wanted something in between and Russia didn't have anything in between. It was two opposites. And now imagine the aliens coming here. They expect harmony, beauty, and again, they meet the same thing, underground culture and lame official culture. I guess we can play Beatles for them. I don't know who is popular now. I'm still stuck at Beatles. I don't think Manish Vyas, I guess. I like Manish Vyas. Krishna Das, yeah. I'm not sure that they are much interested in our movies, especially the movies about aliens. I think that could be uninteresting to them. So I'm not sure they are so much interested in our culture. Some of them might be interested in sex. But what they are really interested in is uh, hybridization with us and creating a new species which would be appropriate for living on Earth and where they could incarnate. That is the major ag agenda for most of the alien cultures. They want to play our game, but they want it to play their way. Let me just repeat. They want to incarnate here, play on our territory, but they want to play it in a higher level, in their way. And of course, they, they really care about the humanity graduating. Yeah, many of them are really into ascension. So the aliens would come here and, how they say, roll the sleeves and really want us to, to help us with ascension. All right, here we come, let's ascend. Here we come, let's ascend. <laughs> so ascension programs. And ascension programs, I think, is about spirituality, about meditating. So the aliens will come, say, and now let's meditate. And let's meditate together, make circles. So a lot of things which will they, they will do is what we are doing now, making circles and meditate. And that's what we are going to do in Sedona. We will make circles, meditate, make circles, chant mantras, um, teach spirituality, download spirituality, do Reiki healing, energy healing. So I think when the aliens come, that would be about the same. It would be about telepathy. Yeah, the telepathy class. They will be eager to teach us telepathy and link with us telepathically. Yeah. They would be eager to link with us telepathically and uh, for them it would be a learning experience and uh, of course it would be for us. So let's discuss that. What I'm missing is an intelligent discussion where I can contribute and I can speak to others about things that matter for me. That topic I think is one of the key topics. It is... Uh, the possibility, opportunity for actual action, for actually doing something which makes the future different, may improve, makes the difference. We had some meaningful discussions in the past, 
and they faded. Uh, I would say something changed in the environment. We can blame the individuals, but I think it is the environment that changed. Um, five years ago, there was an environment which was conducive to discussion. People wanted to discuss things. In writing, in uh, blog discussions, in forums, and in uh, discussions in our format of uh, hangout format. But since then, since then, something changed. So we have now more monologues and more questions answered, but not actual discussions. And uh, there was some discussions on Hukula website. It was humancolony.org that site at that time. But they faded. They faded. Um, people just stopped discussing things. And I'm talking about meaningful discussion, which are not about individuals, but about the planet. Not about the individuals, but about the future of the humanity. Sabaki, call the Rita. So the discussion tools also have changed. In the past, there was uh, there were a few forum platforms which were conducive to discussions. So a person would post a topic for discussion and there would be hundreds of people who would contribute to the, to the discussion. I think that, is, that has faded a lot. Now uh, Facebook dominates and Facebook somehow uh, is promoting meaningless discussion like you can easily get a lot of discussion about uh, what you eat today, how do you travel today, how do you look today or yesterday. So selfies are great. I'm doing a selfie now, but I'm trying to bring up important topics of global value. And that is not easy to get discussed. I mean, you can post uh, nice um, posts there. So it's easy now to share things like uh, write a few words on beautiful background and share that. Or it's much more popular to share somebody else's uh, articles or postcards. Yeah, postcards. It's now much easier to post, to share postcards, but there is very little actual discussion. <clears throat> there is a still a little bit of discussion on Bashar's. Um, it's a Google group, Google group. The inheritance, they inherited the Usenet uh, discussion groups. So there is a little bit of uh, discussion in the Google group by, by Bashar fan, fans. Uh, the, the live journal was a great discussion platform, but it faded out. Somehow it was overcome by Facebook. So I suggest let's just uh, use Facebook for the discussion because it can be it, things can be discussed on Facebook. It just needs some sort of culture where we restrict, prohibit the sharings of uh, non-original materials and invite the discussion of important topics. So all the functions are there. It's just the people uh, change somehow and don't believe that discussions are possible, but I think they are necessary. They are difficult, but necessary. It's still very cold here. <clears throat> My hand is freezing. So most uh, popular and uh, has have most impact. I think Stephen Greer has still very big impact on uh, on the society. Um, Kerry Cassidy, I think, is incredible. I still don't understand the business model of Kerry Cassidy. So it all comes to business models. Like until uh, recently, maybe a few years ago, there was uh, a lot of volunteers who wanted to work with us, with Human Colony, and uh, we did some projects with volunteers. And I'm finishing the book, which was transcribed by volunteers. So it's it's still working, but I think there one of the key factors was that. Um, 
there was some disillusionment. We, we were uh, inspired by the idea that aliens would come and physically take us. We wanted to visit the ships. And that was driving the... The volunteers was driving a lot of activity in Hukula. But that just doesn't happen. It doesn't seem to be very near. You know, eventually it might happen, but it might happen to our grandchildren. I don't know. I don't see that coming yet. It would be nice, though. So, uh, and the, the economic crash, which was predicted, it didn't happen yet. And it looks like we ended up in a branch of the timeline, which uh, has economy, economic crash kind of delayed. It's still coming, but not very soon. So in practical planning, it looks like we still have to deal with money. That was my conclusion. And uh, starting from uh, the spring this year, half a year ago, I started the commercialization of Hukula. And uh, we developed some of commercial activities. So we have a little bit of money coming through Hukula. Just a little bit. It is about just a little less than $300 a month. Um, it is not enough to pay salary to anyone, but at least there is a structure which allows to, to do some of the activities um, paid. So uh, we pay to our webmasters, webmaster Slava, a little bit, and um, for video editing and uh, video hosting of the webinars, we have a little bit of compensation. It is little money. It was uh, fifteen dollars initially. Now I think we, we we pay. I know we pay thirty-five dollars for the for the hosting, and we invite more uh, helpers now for money. So we hire. We keep hiring. It's not full-time job. It's occasional help. But we are uh, we you know it seems to be working, and we invite more of that. And I invite more video editing, so this, this needs to be edited. I keep, I make pauses and that needs to be cut out. So looking at uh, commercial business models where light workers can uh, promote the ideas and unite with each other. So obviously there is a, I don't know, it might be not obvious for you, but it is there. There is a, there are ongoing, a system of ongoing conferences, um, paid retreats, and um, seminars with multiple light worker speakers. And you see some of them on YouTube recorded. And a lot of it is advertised, and these gatherings happen everywhere. Among most uh, popular places are places in California, in Los Angeles, and near Los Angeles and San Diego. It's called Joshua Tree Park. So I see that. And sometimes it's really expensive for people, and sometimes it's affordable. It's between $40 to participate to about unlimited $1,000 to participate. So this is great. And this happened all over the place. So Bashar travels, and you can see Bashar advertisements. He goes around big cities and uh, collects very good crowds. So this is um, a show business, yes. So this is a model of the show business. I wish to get there, I wish Jim to get there, but I guess with my energy and accent, I'm not very good uh, a showman yet. Maybe someday, some lifetime. Maybe when I have uh, more important things to say, or more novel things to say, or maybe when the public is more ready to what I'm saying. So that is one model, show business. I guess show business, local show business. You can speak locally and meet face-to-face, -face, physically in the same uh, location to with the people. And that's what we started doing in Hukula. So our retreats first, not retreats, workshops, first workshop, which was in August, and next one coming in Sedona, uh, of that kind. We do show business and uh, classes and teaching. There is less of performance and more of the work. We actually do work in the class, and we do the ascension work 
working with the vortices. And the next sort of the show business is uh, our Hukula Saturday webinars. It's also show business. So we have a show, we have a star channeler, and we have a host of the show and um, a person on buttons, electronic buttons, and the audience asking questions. It's, it's a good format. And it's about the format which, which Bashar uses. So we just took the Bashar's format and expanded it to Hukula, adopted it at Hukula. I want to introduce the discussion format. So please contact me in uh, Hukula private Facebook, on uh, Facebook Messenger, and you can write to me at max at hukula.org email. And let's um, start the discussion format. So I want to speak there and I want you to contribute in an intelligent way. So I invite experts. Let's have expert discussion, like expert roundtable on Pleiades, on Pleiadian culture, culture, on uh, exopolitics. Some sort of discussions which are uh, uh, type of discussions for Kerry Cassidy and Albert Weber. Let's discuss first contact by experts. I'm an expert in a way that I was in a unique position to speak to a lot of aliens through Jim and through a few other channelers. So I was able to get information firsthand. And I wrote a few books about the topic. Yeah, writing books is another business model. When, I'm get, when I get better at writing books, hopefully they will be sold, so that would support me and that would, could expand. I hope that the public will also ripe, ripen for the, for the contact books. And the interest in the first contact will um, rise in the public. First contact and can, consequent collaboration with the aliens. So I wonder what's Kerry Cassidy's business model. She possibly is an invited speaker and that might support her. But uh, her major product is YouTube interviews. And they, these are not paid by anyone as, as far as I can tell, unless she has a, a sponsor or multiple sponsors. So maybe if we find a sponsor, we can do something of that sort. I think Kerry Cassidy's format is great. Uh, format is great the content is great the people she interviews are wonderful the style of interviews to me is a little bit too aggressive and too self-centered but uh, the content is great and uh, in terms of the informational focus I, I would more focus on uh, on the positive side on the positive future I would not as much focus on uh, on the conspiracy. It's nice to know about the conspiracy, but still we need to develop the positive program beyond conspiracy. And Alfred Weber is, is great, so I like his style as well. Coast to Coast is, uh, is another forum, another, it's not a forum, a place of discussion. It's a place of intelligent discussion. So let's... Um, Let's start our own discussions. And we'll talk later about the inner workings of Hukula so we can improve Hukula, grow Hukula in a harmonious way. And also uh, I would tell, I would uh, share how, how we run it and maybe you can start your own uh, version of, of Hukula. So we can just copy and horizontally copy and uh, copy the model. I think it's, it's a decent working model. It can be improved, but I think that's the, pla the place for most opportunity for, for making a difference for the humanity, to make an, an, a real impact. Not only through meditation and inner work, but also through outer work. It's a great way to unite with light workers, making a community and uh, make it work. So I'm finishing my monologue from my video blog from Pine Valley, Arizona, 45, 45 minutes to Sedona, and I will go to Sedona soon, and I will uh, 
do a commercial from there, advertising our workshop and inviting you to come to the workshop. The workshop is going to happen on um, August, August, February 1st to February 6th. In Sedona, Arizona, we rented a, a house big enough to hold a, a circle of light workers. We'll do a circle, a circle and we'll teach Galactic Reiki to curve the Liron. We'll teach Galactic Reiki channeled to curve through Jim Charles. We'll teach um, energy healing, channeling, and we'll do group meditations, group chants to activate vortexes in Sedona. I will hold the space for the spirit to come to you and for downloads to be downloaded to you to change your life. The purpose is to transform the life of yours and to bring to us the ascension closer. We are bringing the high dimensional energies down to the surface. It is the future and it is the best way to make an impact. The information is on hucolo.org, H-U-C-O-L-O dot O-R-G. On the front page, workshop, register for the workshop and there is more information what is there. It is sponsored. It's not we charge your money and, and make it profit. It's the other way around. It's, uh, it is sponsored. So we put their effort and money to make it happen. And if you want to sponsor Hucolo, contact me, max at human calling.org or max at hucolo.org. Have a good day or whatever time of the day you have. Have a good time of the day. Goodbye. Anna <laughs> <laughs>